Right here, let me turn my thing off. Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. So, you mind if I ask you a question real quick? Let, let, let me finish the let me set, finish the sentence for you. Do I sin? Yeah, do you still sin? Uh, I don't deliberately sin. Now, now could I ask Bullshit. you Bullshit. Could, 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 I, could I ask you a question? Do Go you ahead. still sin? No, it's impossible. <laughs> no, impossible. I can't sin. I can't sin. It's so, impossible. So, so True so believers that cannot sin. Through the body of Christ, we are dead. If you want me to get the gospel out, I can get it out right now. Just give me a sec. Hold, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. Even, I don't know if you know who IDL is, right? He's like a Jew from Israel or something. But even he watched the conversation that me and you had. And he was like, oh, man, you know, ETT, you know, you, you cut that guy, you know, six ways to Sunday. You know, and he even agreed, you know, one of the points I brought up about how, what, what is that? What did I say? It was about, um, you asked about, let me rephrase myself. The thing I brought up was I went to a restaurant one time. They accidentally dropped unlawful food in with my food. And I ate it without knowing that it was in there until I could taste it was different. So I said I technically did commit a sin by eating that, but I did not deliberately commit that sin. But then you Well, responded. did you think it was sin? Well, but did you think it was sin when you do it? Let me, let me finish. Then you responded and said that I did technically do that on purpose. Then I asked you, could you like show me exactly how I did that on purpose? And you weren't able to do that. So, so Yes, I was. I told, I told you because you thought it was sin. So therefore, it was a sin. So, so if I didn't think that was a sin, it wouldn't be a sin for me. Yeah. Yeah, well, you got you to understand that Jesus paid for it all. It's not just that, man. It's not just all you, you unicorns and, and hippos and all that, man. You just got to understand, man. You have to you have to line up with the Bible, man. Okay? You have to line up. There's no simple way of tell, me telling you this. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. But, but again, I could turn the same thing around and say the same thing to you. So how do, how do we prove who is right or wrong between me and you if we could both say the same exact sentence to each other? Answer your question. To answer your question, uh, I'm going to read some Bible verses to answer your question, man. If you don't mind, I'll let you read two of them. Go ahead. No, it's only two. But anyway, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. Life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans six twenty two through twenty three. So therefore, it, it says, but being made free from sin, you know what free means, right? Uh, yes. Yes, you are free from that sin, right? Uh, we might disagree as to what you it are means. free from. No, you're so you disagree with the Bible and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness. That means our fruits are unto holiness, being made free from sin. And the everlast and the end everlasting life, and, that, and they're talking about heaven. For the wages of sin is death. Okay, you know what that means, right? When you die, what's God going to ask you? He's going to ask you if you sin or not, obviously. And let's and, and let's get let's get into a little bit of further in this. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So yes, in order to be perfect, you have to. Okay, you have to. Go, you have to have faith. 100% faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And how, how do we know somebody actually does have faith in, in Christ? Like how, how is that determined? Well, do you, well, that depends. Do you still sin? If you still sin, do you, are you really doing what Jesus wants? Well, what, what did Jesus say to do if you believe him? Sin no more. Did he not? No. He, he did say that. He did say that. Oh, and this, this goes back to something we brought up last time. You're, you're talking about, uh, what is that, John the 8th chapter, where he told the woman to go and sin no more, right? That's what you're referring to? Yep. Right. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. <laughs> so, well, well, why, <laughs> if you disagree so, with me, then so, why do you so, still sin, did, bro? Hold, hold on a second. What did the woman do? What did the woman do <laughs> that she was being condemned for? She committed adultery. Which is a sin, right? Yes, she she slept with another she slept with a okay. another woman's another woman another woman's husband. Okay, right. So so with this being said, we can agree that Christ was telling her to go and don't commit adultery again, right? No. So so when Christ told her to go and sin no more, he wasn't telling her to go and don't. It means her. what it's it means what it says, man. Oh sin no more. He meant it. Sin no more. But wait, wait, but hold hold on a second. You're cut to shreds by your own line of logic. You'd agreed with me that. 
committing adultery is a sin. So when Christ told her to go and sin no more, he's telling her to go and not commit adultery again. Well, I mean, how, how, could disagree? how could you disagree with that? How can I disagree with that? Well, first off, because Jesus paid for it all. Understand that. Even if she did commit adultery, he paid for it all, man. Adultery, any sin you can think of, man. You think of it. Name the worst one you can think of, and I can and I can tell you, he paid for it. Okay, so so why why does the Bible say that after you receive the knowledge of the truth, if you consider if you continue to live in sin, there remains no more sacrifice for your sin? Exactly, and that's what you do, man. That's what you do. You're living in sin right now. No, no, hold, hold on a second. No, your, your yeah, is completely. You're completely no, cut because it's no, saying. It's, hold, no, hold you're completely second. cut because you're completely cut, man. Because I'm trying to tell you that it's impossible for me to sin. Okay. It's Wait, impossible. You're clearly, you're clearly wrong on that because you lied. First of all, you committed a sin on the last conversation. That I, no, I don't sin. Sense. I can't sin. It's impossible. I, I mean, well, well, first of all, what is that scripture? First John, what is that scripture? First John chapter one, verse eight. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and we're lying. Just off of this alone, based on our last conversation, I said I don't deliberately sin. But then you lied and said, well, oh, you, you, you said you did deliberately sin. So you deliberately said a lie about me on stream. Therefore, you, you did deliberately sin. sin because you, you did say earlier, oh, I don't intentionally sin. All sins intentional sin, dude. But prove, I mean, prove, to me it's un prove to me it's unintentional. How can sin be unintentional, huh? La Lazarus, Lazarus, are you going to be able to have a conversation, a two-way conversation? Because every time I speak, you talk over me. I don't mind having you on here. But if you're on my platform, you are going to give me a chance to speak without being talked to. Me. Okay, okay. Well, I thought it was my opportunity to talk, man. I didn't know you were finished. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to pick up on Okay, so going back to you said that I said that I don't intentionally sin, which I said in the video that I don't intentionally go around and commit sin. However, I said it's possible that time to time I could commit a sin, but I didn't say I deliberately do sin. However... I gave you an example of a sin I did commit that I did not deliberately commit on purpose. But the example I gave where I was at the restaurant, they threw a piece of unlawful food in with my food and it looked identical. So I ate it without knowing it was unlawful because I ordered a, uh, I ordered a particular food type. So they accidentally dropped that in when they were preparing my food. So that was technically a sin I committed, but I did not intentionally commit that sin. So you're claiming that I did intentionally do that, but the burden of proof is on you. But because you're not capable of proving to me how I deliberately sinned there, you can't, you have to dodge the question because you don't have a way to answer that logically. Go ahead. Yeah, hang on. I got, I'm pulling up a Bible verse. Hold on a second. I'm. Here we go. Okay, to answer your question to that. Yes, I already gave you an example why you intentionally sin because you say, oh, I, just because you sin every once in a while doesn't make you saved, okay? You, you said it yourself. I don't deliberately sin, but just because you sin every once in a while, does that really make you saved? No. Well, well, I'm going to prove you, it. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All, all, you read, all you read your verse, that's fine. But there, there's already a misconception because I don't go around and claim that I'm saved because the Bible says... What is so it? you're not saved. Let, let, so you're not saved. Let, please don't talk over me. Okay. Me. Matthew chapter... 24 and verse 13 it says but he that endures until the end is the same that shall be saved so the end hasn't came yet so nobody is saved today so that's the first misconception that you started off with but you can are you talking about the end when jesus christ comes back and uh takes all the believers into heaven and sends all the sinners to hell well there's you're talking about the, you're talking about that end times right? you're talking about end times right let me let me correct you i am talking about the end times but the hell you mentioned doesn't exist but that, that's a topic for another time oh it does and you're going there but anyhow <laughs> Well, Jeremiah, kind of like you are though too. I mean, how, how would you? No, I'm not. Him, no, I'm not. Jesus, Jesus is going to let me to heaven, bro. You're not. Anyway, <laughs> there. But anyhow, well, Jeremiah, kind of like you are though too. I mean, how, how would you? No, I'm not. Him, no, I'm not. Jesus, Jesus is going to let me to heaven, bro. You're not. Anyway, well, Jeremiah well, 18. Well, well, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. How the hell do you know for sure that you're going to go? Because Christ said, it was that Matthew 7 21? Christ said, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So how are you so sure that you're going to be one of the chosen to enter? Because he said it is going to be. Because you're, because you're one of those people, man. You're one of those people who are saying, oh, Lord, Lord, I'm going to enter into heaven. I'm going to try my best not to sin as much as possible. And then you go and then you continue to sin and then you sin, repent, repeat, sin, repent, repeat. That's how you do it. But anyhow, are you going to let me finish my verse? Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good, wherewith I said I would benefit them. So, if you do evil, which means you still sin, 
and that it do, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good whereth I said it. I would benefit them. So really, every time you sin, all you're doing is growing. All you're doing is doing yourself bad, man. Because guess what? Then I will repent of the good. Okay, that means the good will be gone. You know that. That's what it means. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over my words. Wherewith I said I would benefit them. Therefore, I would benefit them. It would be because look, this would benefit you in the way because you don't obey God. Okay, because if you truly obey God, you would stop sinning. Isn't that true? You Hello. Would, um, okay. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. The, the answer to the question is, if you are sincere about following after Christ, you would live your life regarding the, his teachings that he taught in the Bible. But what did he teach his followers? I'll give one example. What is that? John 14, 15. If you love me, keep the commandments. Christ taught his followers to keep the commandments of God. That's we do he, keep the commandments. I keep the commandments perfectly, man. How many commandments? You All of them. Oh, how you mean the ten, are you talking about the six, 600 laws or the ordinate laws that Moses made or the Ten Commandments? Do you, do you know exactly how many laws there are in the Bible? Over over six hundred. Do you, do do you, you keep them? Exactly? Do you uh, keep oh, them perfect? Hold, 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 on, hold on a second. I'm I'm testing you real quick. I know how many there are. It is over six hundred. But do you know exactly how many it is over six hundred? I don't know the exact number <laughs> over six hundred. I just said over six hundred because that's that's a fair estimation, right? It's six hundred and thirteen. But you can continue. Okay. Okay. I was okay. I was twelve. I was. I forgot twelve. Twelve other laws. Okay. Whatever. Thirteen. 13. Anyhow, James 2.10 Anyhow, James 2.10 says uh, whosoever whosoever shall uh, keep the entire law but offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So that just crushes your logic right there, man. You don't keep the law perfect. That's your problem, as, man. As, as, I, as I explained to you before, in the time that we're in today, nobody can perfectly live by all the commandments. That's why we're under grace. We're under grace. Yeah, grace. Because, yeah we're under grace, but you choose to sin, repent, repeat. Every day, can, can you uh, can you prove that to me? Like, say, let's say for an example, right? Because you're you're apparently on some type of <coughs> level, if you know something. So, could you give me like two examples of a sin that I'm going around committing every day? Like, like do you know two examples? Surely you know two. All of them, all of them. N name, me two. You're name me two. You're committing all of them: rape, murder, adultery, all that. I name you three. I, I that, you're, you're doing all of that. I, I no, you're doing all of that. This is, laughable. this is laughable. No, it's not laughable. The Bible means what it says, and if you're laughing at the Bible, then you're a joke. James 2.10 okay. means what it says. Okay, here's a, just for the audience listening, this is the knockout. This is this is the spiritual knockout right here. So, so Lazarus, um, on our last conversation, there was a part where we went back and forth about the Bible being literal versus symbolic. And my stance on it was there are certain parts in the Bible that are literal and should be taken as literal. But then there's also parts in the Bible that are metaphorical and symbolic. It depends on where we're reading, what verse we're reading is how we determine what the context of whatever it's speaking about is. But then you said that everything, literally everything in the Bible should be taken as literal. You still stand on that, correct? You'll see why I'm asking. I, like I said, I still think the Bible means what it says. And if you take words out of it to try to twist your own narrative, then are you truly speaking God's words? No. Okay, so, so everything in the Bible is 100% literal all the time, right? Yes, and that's that's okay, what the cool. past that's what the okay, pastors let me, let me, that's what okay go ahead that's what the pastors and priests at these heathen buildings won't tell you people okay they'll tell you people oh do this do that keep these laws do that but are they but if they go by the book should they should you take them should you take them seriously if they're not going by the book all right let, let me let me read something for you real quick this is. This but is can you? Girl, I'm sorry, but can, can, for your ass, man. Can, can you answer my question real quick? Would you trust a priest or pastor who doesn't know the Bible? No, I, I wouldn't trust them. Neither would I. Neither I, would I, man. Hell, at least at least we could agree on that. At least we could agree on that. But anyway, let me read something for you real quick. I pulled this up. You said everything in the Bible should always be taken as literal. I'm just intrigued to see what you say about this. Uh, John chapter 6, I'm going to go to verse uh, 53 and start. And I'm going to read down to, um, let's see, I'll read down to verse 57. It says, um, verily, verily, red letter, I say unto you, expect, except ye eat of the flesh of man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will rise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink. <coughs> he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him, as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eats me, 
shall he shall live by me. So my question for you is going by this saying, Christ said to eat his flesh and drink his blood. By your logic, you're saying this is literal, that we have to be cannibals and actually eat human flesh because the Bible is always literal. It's not a sin, because, but, but could I, it's not a sin, but could I, could I, could I, tell, could I add, could I tell you something about that? Why did Jesus? Why did Jesus give? Why did Jesus give uh, his followers uh, bread and wine in place of his body? It was a spiritual. Yes, you're not. You're leaving that part out. It was a spiritual thing. Okay. Uh, but you see, here, here's here's the problem. He was giving his spiritual blood and his spiritual here, here, here's, blood. Here's, here's and the you're problem, not, of course, you're not going to read the verses after because. No, here, here's the here's the problem. Don't I mention the bread know, and wine. Here, here's the problem. I already know what it's talking about. That's why I literally had the connecting verse to it highlighted, which it was going to go to next to show what it's actually talking about. We clearly see. Matter of fact, let, let me let me even pull this up real quick. So you weren't reading the whole thing. Why? I mean, you. I mean, come on, dude. Everybody knows that Jesus used wine and bread as a substitute for a spiritual body for the bread well, representing once, his body once again, and the and the wine representing his blood. No, no, no. It's not representation in the Bible. It's what it's what it says in the Bible. Okay. They literally said bread and wine was his blood. This is my blood. This is my body, okay. and his followers so, ate, the, again, ate the bread and drank the wine. Okay, Lazarus, I'm going to cut you off here. As I Go said, ahead. I already know that's what it's talking about, but you said the Bible should always be taken as literal for what it's saying. So with your statement, when I read where Christ says to drink his blood and eat his flesh, that has to be literal going by your understanding of the Bible. Because if you agree that that is symbolic and just metaphorical for something else, then you agree that your statement about everything being literal in the Bible is completely wrong. Do you agree that you are wrong on that? No, I'm not wrong on that whatsoever because you didn't even read the verses before that. Didn't even read the verses before. Did you know what that? Do you know where we can find another part of the Bible where it speaks about this, where it refers to his flesh and his blood? Sure, sure. Give me a second, okay? I, I got it right here for the audience. This is Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Christ took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it into. His ah, head. see, it says bread in there. See, see how they so see, see how it specifically says it. Yeah. Let, let me finish. It says. Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. <coughs> so when we see in the Bible where Christ spoke about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, it's metaphorical, meaning this uh, wine and the bread. That's what it's metaphorical meaning. But uh, the only reason I brought this up. Is yeah, Jesus, you, Jesus used the metaphor. Lazarus. The Bible didn't metaphor it himself. Lazarus. Jesus used the metaphor. What, you, Lazarus, you can... one second. The only reason I brought this up is because you said that everything, literally every verse in the Bible, should be taken as literal. So I clearly gave you an example that is not literal. And, I, and you gave me an example of, of it being literal. What, what example did I give you of it being literal? You just admitted to me. It was bread and wine that was his body and blood. You just said it yourself. What I, what I said, going back to John the 6th chapter, right, when Christ was on the boat and he told the people, you know, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And if you even read on, ironic you wanted me to read on, but if you read it, the people thought that he was speaking about cannibalism. The people that heard him say that, they thought, well, is he really saying that we should literally eat him? That's what the people thought he meant. But I'm showing you what he meant by that parable. So once again, this is a nail in the coffin on you claiming that everything in the Bible is literal because you are agreeing with me here that when Christ said to eat his flesh and drink his blood, it's not they did. Literal they literal. did. They did eat his. They did eat his flesh and drink his blood. That that's what the bread and wine wait, was. Wait, so, so you're saying? Hold on, hold on a second. You said they did literally eat his flesh and drink his blood. So you're? Are you saying? Yes. That when they took Christ off of the the cross, they cut him up and ate him. Are you saying that? No, you're not. You're not listening <laughs> to what I said. They they ate the they ate the bread and blood as and wine as a substitute for the blood and body. You, that's not what you're getting. Jesus straight up told them, "Hey, this is my flesh and this is my body." And he and he made them eat them. So guess what? They did eat his flesh and they did drink his blood. All right. So therefore, don't tell me they didn't. All right. Don't tell me they didn't, bro. Did did they literally drink the blood of Christ when they drank the wine, or did the, the yes, yes, wine they did symbolize something? Yes, they did. The okay, wine was so, his so blood. Wait, hold on a second. Did they drink real wine like me and you drink that we buy from the store, or did they literally? It's probably drink the best. It's probably, probably the best damn wine in the world. Wait, wait, hold, hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, let me finish my question. Did they, when Christ was brought down off the cross, did they fill up the the vessels they drank out of with his physical blood, or did they? No, drink the wine. No, the wine was his blood. He literally said it. His wine. The wine is his blood. That's the just not what you're getting. This is not what you're blood. getting. The wine represents his blood. That doesn't. It's not representing. Mean. It is his blood. It's not a representation. It is okay. The wine became his. 
blood, all right? And so did the bread. Okay. So yes, so it the... is literal. So yes, it is literal. You don't have me caught anywhere, man. <laughs> Check point. I won. Uh, okay, okay. Well, for... yes, so it the... is literal. So yes, it is literal. You don't have me caught anywhere, man. <laughs> Check point. I won. Uh, okay, okay. Well, for for the sake of the argument, we'll let the audience decide who, who got the upper hand with that one. We'll let them decide that. I already because so, I, um... I just explained it to you. But anyway, go ahead. You got another question? I mean, well, shit, I'd have to think because I didn't expect you to hop on tonight. No, no, but, no, no, um, you're okay. Anything off the top of your head? Yeah, but with, with the statement about the Bible always being literal, right, which I won't bring up the flesh and blood one. We'll leave that one. But um, with that being said, I, I just find that to be so laughable and preposterous. Again, I, as one myself who actually read. Oh, so you think the Bible's a let joke? Me, let, me, let, me, let me finish, please. I was going to say, as one who's actually read the entire book cover to cover multiple times, I think that it's completely laughable for somebody to make a statement that literally every word in the Bible should be taken as face value. I mean, there's too many places in the Bible. Where and I say really you're a fool, like and I say you're a fool for not doing it. So, so well, okay, well, let's let's look at it this way. Let's see what's a good verse we could bring up. Uh, oh, like how we brought up last time about how it, what is it? Revelation, the ninth chapter, speaks about how um, Christ had a sword coming out of his mouth. You need you mean to tell me? That, that was literal, like he literally had a sword coming out of his mouth. That's not symbolic. No, it's not symbolic. Could Jesus could do anything, dude. Could, could you demonstrate that? Could I demonstrate that? Um, he walked on water. So what makes you think no, he no, can't no, do no. that? You, you didn't hear what I said. I said, could you demonstrate when you said that the sword's literal? Could you demonstrate? Could you demonstrate? Well, could you show me the verse real quick? Yeah, let me pull it up real quick and read the entirety of it. All right, bear with me just a moment. Because if it's Jesus making a metaphor, then really it's not the Bible making metaphors; it's you. Okay, I got the um, I got the verse here, uh, Revelation chapter nineteen, and the verse, ironically enough, verse nineteen, it says, "And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, which brought miracles before him." with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them which worship his image, both were cast alive into the lake of fire or burning in brimstone. Here, hold on a second. I believe it's the next verse. Oh, yeah. It says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all of the fowls were filled with their flesh. What do you think about that? They're talking about Jesus in that one? Or are they talking about the war in heaven? Well, the, the Christ is the one that, that's bringing war against the armies of the world, so he's the one that has the sword coming out of his mouth. Yes, he brings a sword all the time. Sword of light, man. So, so again, you're saying that that's like a literal, literal sword out of his mouth. Though. Sure. Hey, I'm not going to put an imagination in your head if you don't put one in mine, dude. But could you reread re that again? There's like, like a sword. It says like a sword coming out of his mouth, right? Uh, I'll read verse 21 again. Again, it says, And a remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth? So it's saying the sword came out of his mouth. It's not saying it was like. Are you are you sure that's talking about Jesus? I mean, based on what I read in the chapter, it looks like it is. Or are you sure it's not talking about Saint Michael? It's talking about Christ in the chapter. Okay, okay. Well, yes, he did bring a sword, man. His voice, his voice, man. You're talking about his words, you're, his words, dude. Talking, his words brought. Talking, let me finish real quick. You're talking about. Revelation to 12th chapter where it mentions Michael and fought against the dragon and his devil. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Dragons are real, dude. <laughs> so so, th so that's a, a real fire-breathing dragon? <laughs> yeah, Mike. Are you kidding me? Yes. The, there's only one dragon, and it's the devil. Okay. Let, let's, let's move on to another field of theology, because I, I think this is where you're going to get cut to shreds here. Because, again, all you know is about, like, maybe one or two verses about what Perry taught you. You don't know much. Else. No, no, I brought up more verse. Uh, I haven't even brought up a verse that Perry hasn't even taught me. Did come on? Okay, but let's let's move into this. So, when <laughs> Satan did Satan fall from heaven before? Did, did God and Satan get into a fight and he got kicked out, or, or what, what happened with that? <sighs> Michael kicked his ass and he was casted out of heaven with all his fourteen million followers. You're, you're, where can I read about that in the Bible? Though you're, you're referring to Revelation twelve, right? I believe so. Yeah. 
Okay, now, actually, now, it's, sc- it's like scattered throughout the Bible. In fact, okay, but look, wait, wait, hold on a second, brother. But you believe Revelation twelve is going to happen in the future, though, right? Have what? That chapter of Revelation has that chapter already been fulfilled, or is that in the future? Which one? Like, what chapter, prophecy chapter are you talking 12. about? We'll chapter go into 12. detail. We'll go into detail. What oh, prophecy oh, okay. are you talking about? Where Michael and the angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Did he? Yes, he did. When did this happen? Bef- before the earth was created, man. And how, how can you, where can you demonstrate this to me in the Bible? Because, see, here, here's what I'm thinking, right? Going by what you're saying, it doesn't make sense to me how you could go to Revelation 12 and say, well, this event here, this actually happened before the earth was created. Because when you go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it says these are things that the Lord sent his angel to show John, are things that are shortly going to come to pass. So the things we read are things that are going to happen in the future, not in the past. So if you don't use that scripture, do you have anywhere else in the Bible you could go to prove that? Jude, Satan kept Jude, out? Jude. Go ahead. Jude chapter 1, verse, verse 9 and verse 10. You got that or you want me to get it? Could you pull that up? Yeah, I can get it. Okay, I got it. A Jude chapter 1. And verse 9, it says, Yeah, Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, uh, durst not being against him a reigning accusation, but said, Lord, rebuke thee, but speak these evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast in those things they corrupt themselves. That was there. the verse you want. Yeah, there. Where does that say that Satan got kicked out of heaven in the fight, though? Oh, you wanted that specifically? Well, I mean that—that's what I—that's what I asked you. I asked, well, where could you show in in the Bible outside of Revelation where it before the world was created, where Satan got into a fight in heaven and was kicked out? That—that that was the question I asked. Let's say that in Revelation chapter twelve. That's what it's about. Oh, but, but hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Even though we might view it differently, there's one major flaw, though is the revelation starting at chapter one and verse one on down, it says these are the things that are shortly going to happen that are going to come to pass. So if revelation 12, if that event already took in place, well, why is it in revelation? If it said that these are events that are going to take place in the future. So that, that doesn't make sense. So that's why I was asking you. Revelation isn't revel. Wait, 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 revelation. Isn't that in the new, that's new Testament, right? Yes. Yes. So yes, it still hasn't happened. So it's going to happen again. But you can't show that it happened for the first time, though. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, Revelation. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's going to happen again. Revelation 12, Revelation chapter 12, 7 through 9 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So yes, he was cast into the earth. Okay? Yes, that's how Satan pretty much had dominion over the earth. And then, okay. and, then, and then when Jesus died, he finally fulfilled that prophecy, which sent Satan to hell. Wait, so Satan's in hell? Wait, wait, Satan's in hell right now? Yes. Is he, is he, say for an example, let, let me get this, don't let me get it misunderstood. When you say Satan's in hell, do you mean like, when wicked people go, they're going to be tortured by him and demons, or is Satan being tortured in fire and hell right now? It's his dominion. So, so again, I'm asking you so I don't misrepresent your standpoint. Are you saying Satan's there in, in punishment right now, or is he there uh, punishing people? Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, he's gonna. Yes, it's his punishment for betraying God and you know having too much pride. And yet, and yes, it's because and yes, he does torture those who follow him. Wait, which so you let, me, let me understand this. So, so the devil himself is burning on fire as his punishment, but at the same time, he's punishing other people while he's being punished. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like having it's like having a prisoner torture all the other prisoners. <laughs> okay. Okay. And that's and that's where you're going to end up, dude. And I don't want you to end up there, man. That's why I'm trying to help well, you. Well, I mean, you can't prove it. There's a hell where people go and burn because in the Bible, you you see when you the word hell is seen in the Bible, it either means a condition of suffering on the earth. Or so, it's not a physical place people are punished after death. Let me ask you something. Let's say I'm a non-believer. I'm a complete atheist. I only believe in science and all that bullshit. And then I die and I go to heaven and 
I don't believe in God. Do you think God's going to accept me well, into heaven would, for not believing him? Be, you would be a servant. You'd be a servant. So you would be there. No, 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 no. Would God, would God accept you into heaven for not believing him? Yes or no? Well, I'll, I'll have to answer the question this way. The Bible teaches that everybody is going to be on earth when the kingdom's here. But it's a yes or be, it's a yes or no. Are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to go to heaven if you don't believe in Jesus? To get, answer the question the short way, everybody's going to be on earth when Christ. Why can't you just answer it a yes or no? Because, uh, I, give me a second to explain why. Because you have a misconception, so you have to understand what I'm saying. You think that the only thing that's going to exist is the kingdom of heaven, but I don't see it that way. I see the world existing and the kingdom of heaven existing on the earth. So are you going to be on earth? Yes, but you're not going to be living inside the kingdom of heaven. No, you're going to be you're going to be in hell. Oh, uh, you can't prove that in the Bible. Yes, I can. Okay, so where, where, where else do you go if you don't look? Look, if you don't believe in God and you're an atheist, do you actually think you're going to go to heaven? Where else do you think you're going to go, huh? Where else do you think you're going to go? You're not getting into heaven if you fucking don't believe, man. That's what the Bible says. Once, once again, you have a misconception. You think that when people die, they directly go to heaven, or if they're wicked, they directly go to hell. That's not true in the Bible. That's a no, God, ju God judges them and decides their fate once they die. The Bible teaches when you die, you're in a state of unconsciousness. That's why the Bible compares death to being asleep. Then there's like <laughs> too many verses on that. I could give you one. What is that? John 11, 11, right? Lazarus, Christ told the apostles, Lazarus is sleeping. They thought he was taking a nap. But then Christ reiterates himself and says, no, Lazarus is dead. So Christ was comparing Lazarus being dead to him being asleep. Or another good one for you. Is what is it? Acts chapter seven. Why are you changing the subject, dude? I ask you, where do you go if you don't dude, believe in God? Are, are you are you paying attention? Because I'm literally talking about the subject at hand, about death and what okay. happens when you die. I'm literally talking about. The okay, I thought you were talking about the literal stuff again, but go ahead. Okay, well we'll pay attention next time. So Acts chapter what is it? Chapter seven, I believe it's verse sixty, if I'm not mistaken. But um, when Stephen was stoned to death, right after he prayed to the Lord to forgive the people, it says he fell asleep, meaning what? He died. So again, those are just two verses I can show you out of many more where the Bible compares people being dead to being in a state of unconsciousness, the same state that we're in when we sleep at night. That's where you go when you die. The spirit goes back to God and the spirit's in a state of unconsciousness. That's what happens when a person dies. Another good one, Job, the third chapter. Job describes the spiritual world and he says, they're the wicked, they cease from troubling, they're the weary are at rest. Everybody goes to the spiritual world where they're in the state of rest. This is why on our tombstones, they put it the word R.I.P., right? Rest in peace, because you're in rest. You're not in any type of torments. But are you truly resting if you're in hell? But, but you're not burning in hell. That's no. But anyway, I can prove from the Old Testament that hell exists. I have a verse right here. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So there. He so yes, hell is real, okay? And if you don't believe that if you don't believe in the devil man, then you're sorely mistaken. He's going to take you. And look, you serve him whether you like it or not. Okay, and I'm trying to help you. What, okay, where, where was the word hell used in that uh, in that verse? It sounds like hell. But you do understand that the Bible speaks about when Christ returns he's going to bring fire on the earth, right? Right, let me show you an example real quick. Yeah, so, yeah, and that's and that's why it ties and that's why it ties into Thalassians, dude. First Thala second Thalassians, okay, actually. Let me, let, me, let me read this. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? You're gonna be punished with everlasting destruction of the presence of the Lord if you don't believe. Okay. Let me let me let me read this real quick. Um Second Peter chapter three and verse ten it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements they shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also when the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in a holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. So what I'm showing you there is when Christ returns, it's going to bring fire on the earth. So the verse that you um, read is not talking about hell, but rather it's talking about a fire judgment that's going to take place on the earth with the people here living here. Yes, for the and end time. Yeah. Don't, hold on a second. Wait, wait. So, so you're agreeing that you had a misconception of that verse? No, that no. You're talking about the end times. Hell is completely different. That's what they're going to go when that end times happen. That's where the sinners are going to go. 
but hell's not here on the physical plane where me and you are walking on, though, right? E no, it's not. Okay, cool. Uh, Psalms chapter 9, verse 17. I'm just intrigued to see what you say on this. It says, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget not. So how can people be turned into hell? Uh, well, if you serve, well, if you serve the devil, then obviously that's where you're going. That's his dominion, dude. But it says that they're going to be turned into hell. It doesn't say they're going. It doesn't say they're going to go into hell. It says they're going to be turned into hell. Same thing, dude. Going to hell and being turned into hell. That's that's bad. Okay. Either way, it's bad. And besides, you still haven't answered my question, dude. Where do you? Where do you go when you die and you don't believe in Christ? Where do you go? Where do you go? Your soul departs from the body and your soul goes back to God. Okay, but do you go to? But are you going to go to heaven? Okay, let, let me once again let me explain this. We both have a different view on this. This is why it's hard for you to understand. What I'm saying is that when Christ returns to the earth, He's going to establish His physical empire, the kingdom of heaven, on the earth. However, there's going to be other people living outside of the kingdom of heaven that are going to be subject to Christ's dominion. So, if, say, if you were an atheist who didn't believe in Christ, you're going to be on earth when Christ is ruling, but you're going to be subject to Christ and His Israelites. And there's too many verses to support this. Let, let me ask you a question. Since when you and Perry make it to heaven under Christ, right, are you guys going to have servants that are under you? Yeah, yeah, we're going to have servants. They're going to be called angels, dude. But you're not going to... The I'm angels. Have the angels, no. No, the angels serve us, dude. We don't need... No. No. Because you look, our angels. Get, look, our man, angels. get this, get this whole Edomite bullshit out of your head, bro. There's no such, there's no race for, in God, for okay? For, for for the record, you're the only one who mentioned the word Edomite on here, just for the record. I know, I did say that word, okay? But you're you're obviously paraphrasing it into e some Edomite bullshit, okay? I, I mean, it. For, for for the record, I didn't even bring up the Edomites, who they are, where they are. I didn't even bring that into the. I know you didn't bring it up, but you're. I know you're not, but you're acting like one. Uh, well, that, Not that, acting like one. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me par let me let me paraphrase that better. You're okay. 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 <clears throat> You're saying that we're going to serve other people. What do you mean by that? Like by race? Because you've told me before that if I go to heaven and I'm white, I'm going to be serving people who are from Africa, right? The true Africans who are going to hell. You claim if that, you're, right? If if you're not a Israelite, you're going to be a servant to the Israelites. Yes, but they, those people. Yes, but the people you think are not real Israelites. There hasn't been real Jews. You know who the real Jews are? Oh, uh, you tell me. It's the true believers. It has nothing to do with race, man. Why is the Jesus, Bible called Jesus paid? Race? Jesus paid for it all, black or white. Okay, I'm just gonna break the ice with you, getting, man. Uh, hold on a second. We're getting sidetracked. Hell, you got on me for going off topic, but then you go off topic. So that that's a, that that's some hypocrisy there. But anyway. Um, let me bring this up. Hold on a second. Well, we're getting sidetracked. Hell, you got on me for going off topic, but then you go off topic. So that, that's a, that, that's some hypocrisy there. But anyway, um, let me bring this up real quick. Since we're going into the servitude, you said that angels are going to be under your dominion. Real quick, are nations in the Bible, are they peoples or are they angels? They are people. So when we see in the Bible, say, for example, if it says the nation or the nations, that's referring to like a group of people, right? It's not referring to angels. Yes, but however, in Galatians three twenty twenty eight, it says there is neither Greek nor Jew, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. So no, I'm not going to be serving anybody but Christ. Okay, but let me let me read this. There's a reason why I asked you that. You agreed that in the Bible where we see the word nation or nations used, it's not referring to angels, but it's actually talking about humans. So let me read this real quick. Uh, Revelation chapter twenty two. I'll start at verse twenty six. Actually, verse 25, it says, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcomes, and keeps my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule over them with rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received to my father. And I'll give him the morning star. So you're in the box now, because Christ said that the man that overcomes, he's going to give him power to reign over the nations with a rod of iron. So now, how do you get around? That's not what it said. That is that's not what it said. said. That's not what it says. Read it for me. Reread. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what, what verse is it? Can you copy and paste it and put it in the in the private chat? I'll read it for you happily. All right, let me see if I can. Give me a second. What verse, what verse is it? It's um, Revelation chapter 2, verse um, 
25 to 27. Let me see. I might be able to put it in the back for you. I'm on the phone, so it gives a, uh, it's difficult, but I believe I put it back there for you if you want to read it. All right, all right. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcometh me and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. <laughs> all right. It says, it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my work, which you don't, because you pretty much ignored Galatians 3.28 when it says there's neither Greek nor Jew, bond nor free, and and works and keepeth my works unto the end. That means believe, into, believe into, on him unto the end, have faith in Christ to the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't literally, yeah. So it doesn't mean literal people, dude. Wait, but, but you said earlier, you said earlier that when we see pe nations Nation or nations in the Bible that represent people. You, you do realize you said that, though, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase that a little. Bit. Wait, wait. So, so now, so now you're taking it back? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I, I walk you down, man. You said earlier, you said earlier that when we see pe nations, nation or nations in the Bible that represent people. You, you do realize you said that, though, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase that a little. Bit. Wait, wait. So, so now, so now you're taking it back? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I, I walk you down, man. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, I will give him power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Now, what's he talking about when it comes to nations? Do you know? Repeat your question. I was typing something. <coughs> hold up. Hold, hold up a second. <clears throat> well, why he's looking for that, just to clarify again, before I even read the verse, I deliberately asked him when we see the, the word nation or nations in the Bible, is it talking about angels or talking about people? He agreed it's talking about people. And the reason I asked is because he said that we're going to reign over angels in the kingdom of heaven. But I shown here where it says we're going to reign over nations in the kingdom of heaven. So he's in the box here. He, he has no way to get out of this. He has to agree it's talking about peoples because he agreed. Well, what he about chapter before. seven? What about chapter seven? You're not going to mention what? chapter seven. No, After this, I beheld and lo. A great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kinders and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our Lord, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. So it wasn't just so of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, it says all, notice that, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. And palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation to our God, which sits upon the upon the throne and upon the land, the Lamb." So therefore, therefore, what you what you're saying is what you're what you're misinterpreting here is saying, "Oh, once we go into heaven, we're going to have control over all nations." <clears throat> but it's but it also but that but but then wait 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 but then it says here, and no man. Which of no man could number of all nations and kinder all people and kinders and people and tongues stood before the throne. They stood before the throne and they said, and they said it themselves, salvation to our God, which is upon the throne. Okay, I, I see that, but, but what, what are you? So these people, you... if they're true believers, that means they can't sin either. Okay, so if you're a true believer and you cannot sin, then you're saved. Okay, but before we jump topic. You said that I skipped over this. So, so then I asked you two times and didn't respond. I asked you, what about this? Are you asking me or what part did I skip over here? Because I didn't even bring the chapter up. So Seven? So I said seven. I'm skipping down a few chapters. I'm like, whoa. Once again, I, say I, after... I see that, but I'm asking you, what are you asking me about it? Because you said you had a question about Because, I, no, no, no. It wasn't a question. I was proving you wrong. You said that, oh, we're going to serve. Oh, there's going to be per people in the nation that we got to serve. Specifically, true Hebrews. You said that, right? How does this? How does this prove that wrong, though? I mean, what, what how does this prove this wrong? Because it proves that all nations are believers in God, so they're all saved, and you're trying to trick them into not believing that. Well, I, I disagree with you on that, but wait a second. No, wait, yes, you are. Yourself. Yes, wait, you wait, are, wait, dude. Wait, wait, it's hold, clear hold, as day. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here, here, you're cut to shreds. So, are you saying, since you're saying other nations believe in God, so you're saying that everybody's going to be saved? Not everybody. Saying? Not everybody. 
Those who okay, believe so, will be saved. So, okay, okay, so those who Lazarus, don't believe are not going to be saved. Okay, Lazarus, you're still cut to shreds however you try to cut this because you agree there's going to be people that don't accept Christ. So I've shown you where the Christ chosen are going to have dominion over those people. So even if you try to use this scripture, try to twist on, you're still left in the box because what about these other people that don't believe out of these nations? They're still well, going to be well, obviously they're going to hell. There, there's your answer. <laughs> Okay, real, real quick, let, let me respond to what you brought up there. Acts chapter 2, verse 5, it says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Right, so when he's seen that vision, he's seen people who looked to be from all over the world. That's why he spoke about them being from all nations under heaven, because he's seen them. There was a massive multitude of people that he couldn't number, and he's seen what they look like. They look like they came from all over the world. It's very simple. But you said that there's a hell that people go to. And I, I keep asking you to prove me this, but you cannot do it in the Bible. Yes, I can. Give me a minute. Yep. But you're still cut to shreds too and left in the box because you still haven't answered my question. Still haven't What's answered. The What's the question? And you still keep dodging around it and trying to give me a bullshit answer every well, time I, I ask you this, okay? Dude, I, but I ask you where, time what the question is. Where do unbelievers go when, when they die? Do they go to heaven? And, I, and I've, I've answered the question. They're going to be on earth when Christ is ruling. I don't see them. Where are they? Wait, so so Christ is ruling right now? Yeah, he's always ruled. <laughs> Wait, are you... I don't see them. Where are they? Wait, so so Christ is ruling right now? Yeah, he's always ruled. <laughs> Wait, are you are you a full preterist? What? Did you even know what that means? You never heard of the doctrine of full preterism before? You mean you mean the end are you talking specifically the end times? A full preterist is a person who believes that all prophecies are filled and that we're living in the kingdom of heaven under Christ today. You Do you believe that or not? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm saying okay. that Jesus so how, is how, the how king is of heaven and he and he rules over all. So, yes, okay. he okay. does okay. rule over all. Okay. You're just trying to – why are you trying to twist what I'm saying every time I every time dude, I make a statement, like, bro? Dude, I'm literally not doing that. I'm literally asking you because you made a statement that sounds like full preterism. So I didn't – so I asked you so I do not misrepresent your standpoint. I asked if you – held that view because I didn't know where you're coming from. I mean, you're trying to make me look like the bad guy, but I'm literally asking you that so I don't misrepresent your standpoint. But anyway, yeah. I digress. So Christ is ruling, which I agree that the Father has control over all things, of course, but we're not living, let me finish, we're not living in the kingdom of heaven right now, of course. So with that being said, when people die, they're not being, they're not here right now with us because we're not living in the kingdom right now. I mean, this is very simple. So the I'm trying to explain this the best way I can because you have a different viewpoint from me. The reason why we don't see people who died 20 years ago walking around today is because we're clearly not in the kingdom of heaven where Christ's empire is set up. That's clearly why we don't see that. I'm, go ahead. I got nothing left. I'm kind of tired. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, you have a good night. All right, stop all right. sitting. Stop sitting. <laughs> all right. Well, have a good night, man. Have a good night. So anybody who watched that conversation, I mean, you, you see that guy got up. That guy got cut to shreds. Though I will admit, I will admit, I didn't expect him to hop on tonight, so I was not as prepared to, um, you know, interact with an individual like that tonight. Otherwise, I would have had a few notes put aside that I could have pulled up that I set aside, you know, beforehand. But um, unfortunately, I didn't know he wanted to stop by. But um, but that's all right. You know, I try to answer his questions, but it's it's difficult because I have to word it a certain way so I don't get cut off. Because he asked me, say for an example, he asked me. Will people that don't believe in Christ be in heaven? I have to respond and say, because again, he wants me to give like a yes or a no, but I can't really do that because me and him have a different ideology as far as what heaven is. He believes that heaven's just going to be like, I don't know, a city floating in outer space or something like that. I mean, that's probably his view. But what I'm saying is that the earth is going to be here, but the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on the physical earth. So outside of the kingdom of heaven, you're still going to have cities and societies set up but they're going to be under the dominion of christ i mean this is very simple to understand that's why when you read isaiah 60 or revelation you know 22 it speaks about or what is that chapter 21 it speaks about the kings of the earth bringing their riches to the gates of the kingdom of heaven it's like wait a second well what kings are these if there's no kingdoms outside of christ's kingdom then how are the other kings bringing their riches to christ and the answer is because there are other kingdoms set up on earth, but they're all under the dominion of Christ. That's why these kings are bringing their riches to the kingdom of Christ, because they're under dominion. They're under his dominion. So they have to 
uh, abide by his statutes and com commandments. I mean, this is very simple to understand. But anyway, uh, let's see. Let me see. That was an interesting.